Our first morning in Jacksonville started with a delicious breakfast at Blessings on State, prepared by the lovely Gwen and her husband, Glenn. We are going to go shopping. Oh my gosh, my favorite hobby. Oh, yeah. And then we're gonna purchase this yesterday. I'm kind of loving this. Yeah. Very cute. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, shopping time, and then we'll have lunch at Mulligan's, and then some things at 2 30. Cookie. Cookies. We're gonna decorate cookies. Does anybody remember way back on our channel when we did gingerbread houses and mine literally fell apart? Cause I'm- But you're just decorating just a cookie. Just a cookie. I don't think we have the video on here where we decorated Christmas cookies. Oh my gosh. And I put the apostrophe for the year in the wrong place. Well, that was just a whole- Then it was time to go shopping y'all. Our first stop was a fairly new favorite for the Jacksonville ladies called Homegirls. Homegirls, I started, well, I opened my actual retail location three, a little over three years ago, and I moved uptown just last year because I knew I always wanted to end up on the square. I've been in retail my whole career, so about 30 years now, so this was always my end goal was to have my own boutique in downtown Jacksonville. One of our favorite parts about Homegirls was the size inclusivity. You could find everything from small to 3X, and that made our hearts so happy. So naturally, we had to pick up a few pieces. We also can't continue without thanking the Jacksonville Area Convention and Visitors Bureau for sponsoring this entire trip. And of course, Miss Gwen from Blessings on State for hooking us up with gift cards for the shops we visited. Everyone in Jacksonville was far too sweet to us and we are still reeling from the joy and love. Thank y'all so much. Downtown Jacksonville exists around the beautiful town square we showed y'all in the first video. And it really is a quaint, cute, and quintessential Hallmark town. Our next stop was a collaborative, which is such a unique shop and we fell in love. So we've started this co-op, a collaborative. Um, it's a group of different small businesses underneath one roof. It's important for us for them not to be singled out into a booth, but it's all amongst each other. So um, it looks more cohesive and it helps sell their items. So maybe someone does earrings and another person has clothing. And so if we match them together, somebody might think about buying both of those rather than just one item. Their mission was to take small businesses that aren't able to sustain themselves in a brick and mortar and give them a space to showcase their incredible products. Another unique part of our co-op is that several of our participants are women-owned businesses. They have something for everyone, and our favorite part was how affordable everything is. And that's all by design. Buying something can be, it can be a mood lifter, oh, yes. <laughs> you know, a mood booster, and um, so being able to walk out with something. They wanted to make things affordable so everyone could come in and have that euphoric experience of buying something without breaking the bank. We fell in love with some of the handmade earrings and the incredible camera lights. We may or may not have found two more brownie cameras at an antique store and brought them back the same day to have them turned into lights too. I don't know, it could have happened, but I guess you'll just have to keep watching to find out. Becky also has a framing area in the back of the shop. It's called On The Wall, and it's kind of the company that started it all for a collaborative. So you come back and choose a beautiful frame from this super cool wall attachment that Becky's husband built. Downstairs, underneath the collaborative, you'll find Corey's photography studio. So naturally, we had to check it out. If you didn't know, Corey followed us around Jacksonville and snapped some adorable shots. Thank you. As a two-woman show, we rarely get photos of ourselves in action, so these are priceless. They got sparklies on them! After a collaborative, it was time for a sweet stop into Holly Cakes for some of their house-made cupcakes, which are for sure Jacksonville favorites. 
Hey everybody, it's Joni B, and of course, I'm the lucky one that gets the cupcakes. Woo! Thank you, Miss Gwen, for the $10. Um, had a blast spending it. So, let's see, we have a red velvet, we have a brownie, Jennifer, you can't have any of that. Okay. Um, we have a pumpkin, we have a carrot cake, we have a chocolate, and then a mocha. That one's for me. <laughs> to show you that oh baby yummy it looks like roses on top doesn't it yeah all right holly's cakes here in jacksonville illinois just down the block is antiquarius which is a stunning antique shop it's one of those places that has such gorgeous pieces that even looking at them feels like a risk of breaking something the owner's cousin was in the shop and had some beautiful things to say about gwen and blessings on state we just had a marvelous time at gwen's I had uh, two, three cousins that stayed there, and Antonio, because I live in Springfield. But uh, those, that week or ever how long they stayed, we just had the best time on the front porch. Oh. Just uh, wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. She has a she has a place that almost a healing place. I could feel it yesterday, you know, where you just felt very comfortable. Oh, we were, and just talked for hours. Antiquarius is a great stop for some classy furniture that we had no space for in Archaea Optima. Guess we'll have to come back in November. Ahem, <laughs> hint, hint. After Antiquarius, it was time for one of our favorite stops of the day, Market House Antiques. I have been here in Jacksonville for about three, almost four years now. Um, I am not originally from here, so I am proud to say that I call Jacksonville my forever home. Oh. <laughs> what brought you to Jacksonville? Family, actually. Oh. It was my grandfather. He moved, him and my grandmother moved here in 2000. And, you know, since then she had passed away. And then he was getting up in age too. So we had other family who were like, well, it's about time you guys decide to come a little closer because not really doing so well, but he'll never admit it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, typical. Um, so we moved here and then we uh, bought the buildings here. We originally ran it as a bar. And then um, about a year and a half later, we decided to transition to a completely different business. As you can see, yeah. we went from bar ownership to antique dealer. So <laughs> <laughs> complete 360. Yeah. Um, it was my grandfather. He was the one who did it for a number of years. Oh. And then um, when he wanted to get out of the business, um, we wanted to help him clean too. So um, it was just a perfect transition to move all of the antique stuff that he had and into here. And then dad and I then proceeded to get more in here. And we've been, well, I've been doing it ever since. Now y'all, I am not much of an antique store kind of gal, but Nick has some of the most incredible pieces old cameras and typewriters and books galore. And everything is affordable. Say what? He says that when he finds a new piece, he does his research on pricing and chooses something in the middle of the high end and the low end. We love that. This is where we picked up two more brownies to have turned into awesome camera lights. When we get home, we'll have to show you them all set up. We also got some incredible books, two for $4. I could not pass that up y'all. An interesting factoid is that Nick collects potato ricers. Why? Well, you'll have to make a trip to Market House Antiques in Jacksonville and ask him for yourself. After shopping until almost dropping, it was time for lunch at Mulligan's. This cute Irish pub style restaurant is definitely our kind of place. We left our lunch fate in the hands of the staff and we certainly weren't disappointed. First up, Irish nachos. I mean, regular nachos are good, but sub chips for waffle fries, and I am totally down. Then we got to dive into three of their house specials, the horseshoe, Reuben, and classic cheesesteak. You're probably all familiar with what a cheesesteak is, so all you need to really know is it was delicious. The Reuben was a combination of corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Thousand Island dressing served on toasted rye bread. I'm not usually a Reuben gal, but this was an easy 10 out of 10. Then we had the horseshoe, which is apparently an Illinois classic. Two slices of toast topped with hamburger, or your choice of meat, 
french fries and smothered in their house-made cheese sauce. Holy cheese sauce, this was delicious. A thousand out of ten. After filling up on this delicious food for Mulligans, it was time to venture into a shockingly fun store. Well, welcome to Jacksonville. I'm so glad you stopped by. We are um, a small sewing machine and quilt shop that we uh, service our customers with classes and fun things to do. We have a lot of inspiration. Our staff members are very talented in many different ways, so we're blessed that we can help people in, in different avenues of sewing and quilting and so forth. Um, we're usually open regular hours at the store, but we also are just now starting to sell online because of the COVID pandemic, we had to expand. If you're a quilter or sew absolutely anything, I can pretty much guarantee they have what you're looking for. I can't sew to save my life, but even I enjoy looking around. And the ladies in the shop were so sweet. They also work with an organization called Quilts of Valor. Here's a small clip of what they do. My thoughts were, I want to do something to help those who come back wounded. A quilt seemed the logical answer as to what could I do to help those who are serving in harm's way. And that would bring you comfort in the wee hours of the morning when you are wrestling with those war demons. Sue has been to a number of the presentations, and she says each one is more moving than the one before. But the lady explains it and um, tells the history of how Quilts of Valor got started. And then um, we present these quilts. And when you know the people that are receiving them and the stories behind it, it was very, I mean, I just couldn't, I, I can't tell you how honored it was. Um, one of the men came to me the next morning and talked about being in Vietnam and when he came home, how bad it was and how lonely it was and his girlfriend wasn't there anymore and I mean, no one had ever thanked him for his service, ever. Oh. And while she explains this whole process of where it began and, and so forth, what it meant, the man behind me was just sobbing. And I reached around and held his hand through the rest of that presentation. Would we possibly maybe come back in November. We'll be doing some fun things here at Times Square Sewing Complex, so we can't wait to show you more. Of course, we had to make a coffee stop. We wandered into Soap Co. Coffee House, and I picked up a classic iced latte. Where's the perfect place to go with a nice latte, you may ask? A bookstore, of course. Hi, I'm Jessica Gale here at Our Town Books. We're in Jacksonville, Illinois, a historical town in the land of Lincoln, um, in central, west central Illinois. Uh, this bookstore has been here since 2012, but I purchased it in 2018. We're kind of an eclectic shop. We have a mix of used and new books all together on the different shelves and other book-related merchandise. Um, and I encourage anybody to come to Jacksonville, Illinois. It's a quaint, sweet little uh, small town. And um, there's lots of great little shops and things to see around here. They have everything from books by local authors to my favorite, mysteries, and an entire kids section. Then we met a dog. Oh God, oh God, he's gonna hit by a car. Come on. Careful. Hi, come on. Careful. Hi there, Poopy. Just come up over here. Just come up over here. A very cute dog. She was hanging out outside just fair trade, so the incredible owner, Rhonda, invited her in until her owner could come get her. Y'all, when I say this made my day, I'm not even kidding. We're a fair trade store. This is just good trade. And um, if you're not familiar with fair trade, what that means is that everything in here has been handmade by people in developing countries. And we've got about 50 countries in here. So um, fair trade guarantees that the artisans that make the jewelry, all of the products in here, guarantees that they're paid well, guarantees that they have good working conditions, there's no sweatshops involved, there's no child labor involved, and it helps them to bring their communities up, um, kind of helps them to 
um, bring themselves up out of poverty and just, just build on what's going on around their area. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming. If you've never been to a fair trade store, we highly recommend you check them out. You can get some really incredible and unique pieces, and you can trust that the people who made them are being treated and paid fairly. What happened next was so iconic and exciting that we have an entire video coming all about it. But here's a sneak peek of us decorating cookies with Peggy at No Regrets Cookies. It usually comes off pretty easily. You'll notice it has a reseal strip on the inside. Oh, so oh. if you, when you're done, if you want to reseal your cookies, you can. See how that blends together. Keep your line moving smoothly. Apply the same pressure. If you don't feel like your tip's quite large enough, you can cut a little more off. You're basically going to get a coat of icing on it. Now, if you wanted just the outside of this to have sprinkles on it, uh -huh. you could simply dunk just the outside of it myself a little barrier here so I don't have sprinkles flowing everywhere. <laughs> oh gosh. Like, why? What? Okay. Okay, well. How did she dunk? How'd you dunk? It's not a disaster. Let's see. I'm just missing some. Hang on a minute. You got it. Let me finish it. That's good outlining. Considering you've never done it before, that's really good. Thank Yay. you. We've used it as Harry Potter, Practical Magic, Hocus Pocus. Oh, <laughs> and this is the work I have done. Oh, that's a good job. I mean, don't look you is, is that your stimmy? I, I just committed to something after it went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was some abstract we art. <laughs> we had the chance to tour an awesome new sports complex, but we'll let one of the owners, Kristen, tell you all about it. So, this is Future Champion Sports Complex, and we actually purchased these six fields and um, all that goes with it in March, literally 10 days prior to the shutdown of COVID. So, unfortunately, we lost a lot of our spring season, but we're, uh, as I said, six turfed fields, so we can play pretty much any time of year as long as it's warm enough and people want to play. So this has been helpful for us during this time where we're trying to, to um, help out our revenue, but also in a bigger, larger scheme, um, very important for the city of Jacksonville to have this kind of um, economic impact. We've got people here in our hotels, eating at restaurants, gassing up, etc. And while on our fun golf court tour of the complex, we were able to meet the Jacksonville mayor. Well, we love Jacksonville because we, we entertain people like you and we welcome you with open arms. Uh, we've got great people in Jacksonville. Um, it's a community means a lot, but this community is awesome. So, you know, we are so happy that you're here with us today. Um, you'll see the spirit of Jacksonville. You'll see the vibe we've got going downtown and all around the town and we, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy lives to, to greet us and we welcome you with open arms. So it is a very uh, family fun uh, environment here so you'll see people of all ages uh, come to the ballpark which we love. We're baseball fans at heart so this is awesome. It may have been a pretty cold day, but the cheering and excitement helped warm us up for our next stop. Hopefully you watched the first video in this series, where Brittany of the Jacksonville Convention and Visitors Bureau told you that you were going to be the first audience to see inside one of Jacksonville's new businesses. Well, here we go y'all, this is it. Here is a look inside Water's Edge Winery and Bistro. Well, actually the, the winery is part of a larger development here. This is all developed together. It's a planned unit development uh, that has, um, we've got, so we just built six duplexes. We have 26 building lots back uh, by the Country Club Golf Course. Uh, and then the winery is, is 17 acres. Uh, it's franchise, uh, it's Water's, Water's Edge Wineries. It's a Water's Edge Winery and Bistro. We're the 19th 
in the country. Um, hopefully, I'll be opening. Well, you can see we're under construction right now, but we're uh, anticipating opening somewhere around the end of the uh, first of the year. Um, we got just got all our wine making equipment in, so we're in, in the process of unpacking that and going to start making wine. Um, this is we've got a 5,000 square foot building here uh, with a little bit of extra space upstairs. Uh, kitchen, we've got a, a full kitchen here. This is the wine production room back here. Uh, we're going to be very active in, in uh, music as well. I mean, we've, we've set up a stage. We had Mason Sound and Matt Martin Consulting uh, came in and they they've put together a. a a sound system that you can see there's speakers all over and it's piped inside and outside. Everything works on Wi-Fi, uh, on iPads. Um, we make our own wine. Um, we will have you know some craft beers and things like that too, but the, the feature here is gonna be our wines. All of the doors you can see open all the way up. Um, so, and we've got 500 uh, grape vines here. We've got basically four small uh, vineyards around here with different varieties of grapes. We really, you know, weren't in a situation where we wanted to close this every weekend for weddings, so we decided to go ahead and erect a second building there. So we've got a second 5,000 square foot building that's just going to be for events. Basically what we're trying to do here is sort of Jacksonville's first walking neighborhood that's going to have, you know, the winery here with, you know, you can come over and get, you know, a glass of wine, have dinner. Um, we'll, once we get this done, we'll start developing the parcel out on the road, hopefully get a, you know, something out there, a fast casual restaurant or something like that out there as well. Um, but it's, you know, it's a big project, but it's starting to come together. Wine fermentation tanks, uh, a bottle, this is a tank for bottling. These are jacketed, uh, so they're kept cool during the fermentation process. Uh, this is actually a smaller tank for smaller batches of wine. These make 150 gallon batch, these make 50 gallon batches, these make 150 gallon batches. So the wine will sit in these, depending on the, the type, for up to you know, six weeks or so, and then, then it'll age in the bottles. The upstairs rooms are still a work in progress, but they'll be used for events and tastings. They even have this beautiful room for storage and an area where there'll be cameras set up for streaming. So that we can actually stream the performances and then provide the, uh, the artist with, a, uh, you know, with their own um, file of, you know, of their show so they can, you know, they can put that on their own Facebook. After a tour, we got to taste two of their delicious wines. The first was a beautiful bright white, which was my favorite. Then we had a full-bodied red, which coated our palate with rich flavor. This was actually a Joni B and Brittany's favorite. Then on request from Gwen of Blessings on State, we got a concert from Mike. Hey there, Mr. Tim. We have a navy blue. This is from the brand Zanana, which we talk about all the time. 
They just have really comfy clothes and they have pockets in them. And I love pockets. And it's like a little sweatshirt dress almost. Yeah. You throw it with leggings. It's gonna be, and it's not too thick, but it's thick enough. Yep, yeah. so you got it in navy and black. We started the day off with a bang. Yes. So then, I don't even know the order of things. Oh God! Ah! And so I got some super cute, are they embroidered? These are strips of paper, and they're Ooh. rolled. <gasps> Holy crud. Yeah, and I got this one because of its Ferris wheels for Jacksonville. We and then, look at this. And this little daisy's with- With ladybugs yeah. on it. And then she got a soap. I got, it's a snowman. Is it a rubber ducky? It's a rubber ducky. You're kidding. Any cute? Oh my God, yes! If you follow our adventures going to Cracker Barrel, we just started collecting salt and pepper shakers. And Nick had an entire display of them, and so we got this adorable little mouse and cheese, which apparently, after a little bit of talking with Nick, these have been in the store since it opened two years ago. So they were just waiting for us. Of course we had to get some earrings, because when do we not get earrings? And, and oh, so, the, again, Ooh. these are all made by people here in Jacksonville. Um, but the lady who sells these, um, names her earrings after powerful women that she has found for whatever reason. She thinks this one is the Dorothy, and it says Doth Dr. Dorothy Hodgkins was a British chemist. After 35 years of dedicated work, she was able to decipher the three-dimensional structure of insulin using x-ray crystal graphic. She won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Oh, funny story about mulligans. We get there, I turn the menu over to look for what I want to drink, and I see sweet tea, and I'm sure my eyeballs popped out of my head, so I was like, oh my gosh, yes, they had just run out. So that means that the people up here in Jacksonville like, like their sweet, sweet tea. tea. So next time we come, hopefully we'll get some sweet tea. Just close it. We have an entire video coming soon, but here's the preview. Well, I hope we live up to that best burrito <laughs> in Illinois. So we, um, so before when the bar first opened, they used to have steak nights here and we had a chef that, well, Kelly had a chef that would work in, they would do steak nights and it was Friday night and then they quit doing that. And then um, COVID happened and we were a bar, we got shut down and then we decided we need to do something. And when Kelly and I first started dating, we said five year plan, we're gonna reopen the kitchen. So COVID happened and we're like, well, no longer five years, let's do it. It's been three years. So we spent our time in March cooking burritos, trying to get it right. And so then now this is where we're at. So we were able to reopen up and serve food and keep KJB's, I guess, alive. We have the North of Hell and that <laughs> is of course hot. And then we um, add pineapple too. So I like to people to know, cause I know some people have pineapple allergies. Uh, but so we do that so we get a spicy, but yet a sweet mm -hmm. taste at the same time. But these two we make homemade, and this is Kelly's mom's salsa recipe from when he was growing up. Oh, and he's actually from Chicago, so I always tell people it's kind of like a jardinara. So if you're familiar uh -huh. with the jardinara, because it's just like a chunkier vegetable yeah. Yeah, salsa. So these are our two homemade, and then we all, of course we have the medium and a verde okay. as well. We also spent some time playing Miss Pac-Man and Pinball, thanks to the coins that Miss Gwen from Blessings on State hooked us up with. Oh shoot, where am I going? <laughs> oh no, you already had a purple! <laughs> oh, yeah, wait. <laughs> oh, you already had another purple! <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Why are they alive? What's happening? Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh god. Oh, hello. Uh, well, you just like go for it. Oh, there you got another one. Uh, Thank you all so much for watching part two of our documentary series sponsored by the Jacksonville Convention and Visitors Bureau. In the next episode, you'll get a look at some of Jacksonville's most historic places. You certainly don't want to miss that, and all you have to do is subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing to hit that button, y'all.